Hi, my name is Patricia Sanford, and I'm director at the Maryland Archaeological Conservation Laboratory here at Jefferson Patterson Park and Museum. Last week, if you tuned in, you would have had an opportunity to see Justine McKnight, a paleobotanist, demonstrating how she does her work in recovering plant remains from archaeological sites. If you didn't have an opportunity to see that video, then I would like to define paleobotany as the study that uses plants by humans from evidence found on archaeological sites. So why is the study of paleobotany important in archaeology? Well, if archaeologists recover seeds and other plant remains from archaeological sites, we can tell what types of food people ate, how they used plants in other ways, like for baskets, for example. Um, and we can also talk about what the environment was like at the time that the site was occupied. So this week, we're going to do a hands-on activity for students that will help demonstrate how paleobotanists work in the lab to identify the seeds that they find from archeological context. And we're gonna do this today using modern materials. Here's what you'll need for this activity. Scotch tape, tweezers to help with picking out the seeds. An optional but a nice touch is a hand magnifying lens that will help uh, the students see the smaller seeds. Something like sand from the beach or aquarium sand or gravel that you can use to mix the seeds in so that they're not quite so apparent so that the students have to actually look for them. An assortment of seeds, I got these from the dollar store, um, either flowers or vegetable seeds. We created for this activity a card that has little places where the seeds get taped down and then the identifications made on the side. You don't have to go this fancy. You can just use a blank piece of cardstock or a piece of paper, a pencil, and then a tray. And this is what you will dump the sand or the gravel on uh, with the seeds mixed in to spread it out and make it easier to find the seeds. So before you begin this activity with the students, you'll need to create a seed type collection identification guide. By gluing or taping several seeds from each type of plant you're including with your activity to a poster board or a piece of cardboard. Label the seeds by type, and you may want to include an image from the seed packet beside the seeds. Try to pick seeds of different sizes and shapes to make it more challenging for the students. Mix the remainder of the seeds in the sand or gravel of your choice. Play sand or aquarium gravel work really well, but beach sand with its bits of shell and other small debris will more accurately represent the archeologist's experience. This sand is supposed to represent the debris that is left over in the window screen mesh that archeologists wash their soil samples through in order to capture small finds like beads, straight pins, or seeds. Now it's time to begin the activity. Provide each student with a pair of tweezers, a hand lens if you're using that, a quantity of the gravel filled with seeds on a tray um, so that they can spread them out and not make too big of a mess, uh, an artifact seed identification card and a pencil or a pen, and some scotch tape that they can use to tape the seeds down to their card. Ask the students to look through the gravel uh, for seeds. Before you do this, you might want to show them the type collection so they'll know what seeds, the types of seeds they're looking for and what seeds look like, uh, just to get an idea of that before they begin. All right, um, ask the students to use the tweezers to pick up seeds. That one right there. And then to use their tape. tape them down in these little boxes. And then continue looking for seeds. Let's see one here. And I'm gonna need a hand lens to look for some of the smaller ones. Encourage the students to find as many different types and shapes of seed as possible. Um, we've noticed that some students 
just like to go for the large seeds or the ones that are bright and colorful. Um, and you want them to encourage them to try to get as many different types of seed as possible, maybe one um, of each type in each of their, of their boxes. I'm gonna stop at four right now for the sake of time. Um, after your students have filled up their card, then go with them over to the seed identification board and uh, bring a pencil and your identification uh, seed card with you. And let's do some comparing of your seeds with those that are named in the type collection. All right, so now you're over at the seed type collection with your student. And what you're gonna do is help them to figure out what kinds of seeds you have taped to your card based what's on the type collection. And so looking closely here, I can see that my first type is a green pea. And so we'll want to write that down on your card. Our second type looking through looks to be a bean. And again, your student, get, just get them to write it down. This looks like corn. And then this little smaller seed looks like it's probably flax. And so once your students have identified all everything on their, on their card, uh, they can uh, either end or they can do another card if they'd like. Uh, we find that some students like to fill out more than one card. So after your students have finished uh, finding the seeds, you can talk with them about what the seeds might reveal about the archeological site that these seeds came from. So in our case, we found green peas, beans, and, and corn. Uh, so those are all food sources. So you could talk to the students about what types of vegetable diet the people at the site had. And then flax is a, a seed from a plant that is often used uh, to make fabric. So a, a, linen-like fabric. And so perhaps at this site, flax was grown for its use for making textiles. Um, flax can also be a component in food uh, as well, flax seeds. So, um, so you could talk with them about both the, the food and non-food related aspects um, of the site from the seeds that, that they found. As a follow-up activity, you could get your students to plant their seeds, take them off their sheets and plant their seeds uh, either in small paper cups or even in the individual cups of an egg carton um, and water them and then take uh, do an experiment to see how long it takes the seeds to sprout. Um, do the smaller seeds sprout and grow faster than the larger seeds? Um, and then they could perhaps be planted out in a garden and you could even harvest the, the products of the uh, of the, the seeds uh, and eat them yourself. 